This video covers testing the content and functionality of your newly built website, as well as how to really improve the styling of your site. At this point, you should have a site set up with a theme and plugins, and you should probably have taken an hour or two to set up your site's content. If not, take a look at the earlier videos in our series for help with getting the theme or plugin set up, or take a quick break to add content to your site before starting this video. Testing is the last step in setting up a new website. It's one that can sometimes get neglected if everything looks like it's been set up correctly, but it's definitely something that's important to spend a bit of time on. The first step is making sure everything looks right. You want to do this on two devices. Start with your computer before moving on to a phone. Go through each page from top to bottom and look for missing content, any alignment issues, missing images, text that should be links or styling that you want to change. Make sure you check that your links are working by opening each in a new tab by holding Ctrl on a PC or Command on a Mac while clicking on the link. If you notice an issue, correct it right away if it's something small, or start a list of bigger issues that need fixing. After you've gone through the whole site on your computer, take out your phone and make sure that all of the content looks right on your phone as well. Once you've gone through the content, it's time to test the different parts of the site to make sure that they actually work. We'll start with the contact form that we added. Go to your contact page, fill in all the fields, and then submit the form. You should receive an email within a few minutes if everything is working correctly. Double check that the information in the email matches the information that you entered. If any part of that process isn't working correctly, add a description of the issue to our list of bigger issues to tackle later. Next, let's move on to our FAQ section. Make sure that the title and the content for each FAQ has loaded correctly, and that the FAQs open and close correctly when you click on them. If any of that isn't working correctly, it should definitely be added to the list of things that need fixing. If there's something that you don't like about the FAQ content, for example if you want to hide the FAQ author or disallow comments, you can add that to your change list as well. Now that we've tested our contact form and FAQs, it's time to move on to testing our shop. Go to the shop page and browse through to make sure everything looks clean and well aligned, and that all of our products are displayed. Test any filtering that you added to your shop page and make sure that the products that are displayed match the filtering criteria. Click on a product and make sure that the product page displays the way that you want it to. Let's make sure that all the tabs have the right information, especially the reviews and product inquiry tabs. Next, let's test submitting a review via the product page. Fill out the submit review form and then submit your test review. You should see it appear in the admin area and depending on your approval settings, displayed on the product page as well. Again, if any part of that process didn't work, note it on your issues list. That just about does it for the testing portion. How do we go about fixing any of the issues that we noted as we went through the process? First, we're going to prioritize our problems by dropping them into three categories. First, we've got showstoppers. Anything that means your site is useless or extremely frustrating to a visitor fits in this category. Things like a tracking system that doesn't display any results. Next, we've got major issues. These are things like only 10 FAQs displaying on your site, even though you've created a couple of dozen, or content not being aligned correctly, leading to a sloppy look for your site. Last, we've got the nice-to-haves. These are little things like having a different message displayed after submitting your contact form than the message that you'd like to have. After that, work through the problems, starting with the most severe ones and moving on from there. The process I'd recommend for sorting out issues on your website is this. Start by checking if you've got the settings correct. If the author's name isn't displaying on your FAQs, do you have that option enabled? If that's not the problem, search to see if someone else has had the same problem before, either via a Google search or a search of the WordPress.org forums. There are about 30 million websites that use WordPress, so odds are that someone has had the same problem as you, and hopefully they posted the solution to that problem online. The next step after that is looking for help. For issues with a theme or a plugin, you can post directly in that theme or plugins wordpress.org support forum. If it doesn't look like the software developer checks the forum, which you can usually tell if none of the questions have been answered in the last couple of months, then head to their website and see if they have a contact form or email address where you can ask for help. Make sure you describe your problem in as much detail as possible. For example, how can I get my FAQs to display grouped by their categories? On my website they currently display in a random order. That's a clear question, whereas, why are my FAQs not ordered right, is not. Also be sure to include a link to your site so that people are able to see what you're talking about. 
Your last option is to look for support outside of WordPress. You can try posting on a site like Stack Overflow to see if someone else can help you resolve a problem if a WordPress software developer isn't responding about issues with their themes or plugins. Once you've got all your problems, or at least your most pressing ones, resolved, congratulations! Your site is just about done! The last thing you might want to do before launching your website is improve the styling. We've created a blog post that explains how we did that for this site, which we've linked to in the video description. After that you can either launch your website quietly, or have a big marketing push to let the world know that your site exists. Thanks for watching our tutorial series on how to build your restaurant website. We'll be posting a couple of videos on how to keep the content of your site up to date, so that people have a reason to keep coming back. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss those.